Wow. We are back in Black Stephen and the Coronado Expedition. We are in the journey of Coronado 1540 to 1542, translated and edited by George Parker Winship. And it's a good assortment of, you know, different testimonies, you know. We're we're still in uh, Marco Denise's testimony, and he's wrapping up right here, man. Let's get the tail end of this and go into the expedition to New Mexico and the Great Plains. All right, we're going to go right into that. So everything we're talking about is New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Utah. That's a very important piece. California, all that. Mexico, all that. You know what I'm saying? All that, my nugget. All that. Wyoming, Oklahoma, all that. All right, so this specific expedition, you know, is really going uh, from Mexico, kind of, you know what I mean, into what they're calling New Mexico and Arizona. And we've been talking Kalelus. We'll be, you know, back on Kalelus tomorrow, 2 o'clock. I mean, Tuesday, uh, uh, 10 o'clock Pacific, man. Standard time, man. Pacific Khalifa time. Um, yeah, you know, just tune into it, man. Love to your honor to Hebrew Prince, man. Letting us know, man. Unity is the key. And I'm with my bro, one thou, you know what I mean? It's like, if you're going to choose to unify, you got to unify around a code. <laughs> it's that simple. There's, there's never been no black unity with all black people coming together. That's that's a dream. I know. Like, it's never happened before. So, you know, you can't sell us on something that's never happened before. You know, when they try to be like, oh, you know, uh, black, black unity. That's, that's never happened before. These are tribes. It's always been tribal. A tribal war, you know what I'm saying? But the difference between one tribe and another, you know, typically is the power they serve, you know? So it's not about us unifying with everybody who says the name of the creator this way or that way, uh, how will this or hey of this or how will that. The big difference is that with those folks that are saying it different ways, you know, it comes a different ideology completely, you know? And 95% of that is going to be bringing another power before or next to or beside our power. You know, most of that's going to bring you into the Yeshua's and into all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's why we got a nice pure crystallization over here. When we say Hawa as the breath of security, it's a big, you know, it's a frequency war, you know, so it's a big difference. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that's not us separating unnecessarily. It's called crystallization. So, Let's not confuse, you know, uh, the crystallization with unnecessary separation. You know, the, the tribe got to crystallize. There has to be a separate frequency, you know, that is crystallized. Everything's not going to be vibrating the same. However, you know what I'm saying, for the right, you know, uh, you know, for the right mission, you know what I'm saying, for the right situation, it's going to be necessary for everybody to, you know, come together regardless, you know what I'm saying, regardless if they or thinking this or thinking that, you know what I mean? The Christian, the Muslim, the Buddhist, the this and this. I mean, you know, when the ish hits the fan, y'all, people going to forget all them separations real quick. You know, I do believe that. But when it comes to us, when it comes to tribe nation, when it comes to tribing up, we tribe up around a code. As long as you come in that frequency, hey, it's one try, one vibe. And that's the best we can, you know, do to, you know, bring the creator in first, you know, right when you come through the door, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be tried up next to a naga that's going to be sacrificing pigs next to you because they, they believe in that, you know, there has to be a separation. <laughs> you don't want that around your children, you know what I'm saying? You know, someone else, you know, have a whole different type of flow, you know, they, they don't believe in this and they don't believe in that, they're going against everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, that's a different frequency, you know what I mean? And it's the four quarter nines got to choose up to be in this frequency. To choose up, to be crystallized, man, you got to choose up. So, you know, that's right through the door. Then we could walk through a door together. <laughs> but that's the unity we're talking about is Exodus 20 got to sing code. No power for our power right through the door. No other power other than our creator right through the door. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we could say most high. But it depends on whose perspective the most high is. Not everyone got the same perspective of the most high. <laughs> Somebody else's most high is is Jesus. That's their most high. You know, somebody else's most high is Muhammad. You know, somebody else's most high is something. You know what I mean? So just because somebody say most high, you don't really know. You know, that's vague terminology. When we say Hawaii, you know exactly what we're talking about. 
We're being specific. You know, Moses said, what frequency do you want us to, you know, refer to you in Exodus 3? You know what I mean? Verse 13, I am Hawa to be, to be established. We're talking about framer. We're talking about shaper. So it's very necessary to be specific. <laughs> it's very necessary to be as crystallized as possible. Not, you know, for unnecessary separation, but for necessary separation. You know, you don't want to tribe up, you know, with the wrong frequency just for the sake of saying we're working together just so we can prove something. Nah, we ain't got nothing to prove. You stepping up in code, you stepping up in the vibration because this is what we're talking about. More and more war. You don't know what you're getting out here. We, we, we tribing up on the internet, Jack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't know who's, who's in the, in the, uh, you know, chatter box. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who's in the drop chat. You don't know who's in the, on, on them comments. You don't know who's on that email. You got to trust through, you know, we got very, a very <laughs> narrow window to, uh, you know, trust each other. Cause we just, it's all internet based. Everything, all this stuff is internet based. And we're, you know, you got some genuine noggers out there. Then you got a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, out of control cons, you know what I'm saying? That can't control their own emotions and frequencies and can't, you know, uh, shut the door on them hijacks. Got to let the hijack in, you know what I'm saying? And all I got to be clarified, especially right now, I'd rather try but with a few than prove something to nobody <laughs> that I'm, you know, uh, working with everybody. Nah, I ain't trying to work with everybody. You know, I don't know. It's just not set up that way. You know, it's a frequency war. You know, we got to know each other by vibration. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a cold keeper. The tribe up with me, yeah, you got to be a cold keeper. It can't be no guesswork when it comes to the cold we keep. I mean, even Genghis Khan do that. That's how you weaponize in real time. You need a cold. So the best effort we can do, my Nagi, is to have a code. <laughs> a code of conduct for the con. No power for a power. No false witnessing, no vanity on Hawa's name, your breath of security. Man, I mean, no graven images, no idols, right? We could do that, right? We can rest on our Shabbat, complete rest, fall back, sign up. We can do this. No covetousness, man, right? We could do this. So we honor our Ama and Abba above, man. I mean, we can do this, right? So. That's the code. That's the frequency we stepping in. I really step in that frequency through that door with a few. Then to prove anything to any knock that I'm working with everybody. Oh hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. Now, not when I read this, history repeats itself, right? You can't be no fool. History repeats itself. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta pay attention to so-called history if you want to know where you're going. History can't be something you put on a on a side burner ever you got to be digging and figuring this shit out as fast as possible because you got a puzzle to unlock and that history is your puzzle pieces man those are the gems you get them gems then you can control your future you can unlock you know the events in your present you know what i'm saying based on what's already happened and the play that the hijack keep on playing if, if we're talking playbooks look into your history what can you take your eye off that Man, not when you got to drive, not when you see clearly. It's a more and more war, dog. It's a doggy dog world, man. Sign of Safali. Dog headed. These dog heads, man. Yeah, they had to wear this dog headedness since Apollo cursed them because they wouldn't uh, worship Apollo no more. They wanted to worship the king of Atlantis, Alcathus. Yeah, man, we know you're dropped. We know you're dropped. And Thoth, I mean Apollo, I mean Thoth, you know, cursed thing with sign of Sephala, dog headedness. Yeah. So they using a spell, they using some magic so that we don't see their dog headedness, you know. But one day, it's like Zachariah be talking about, the book of Zachariah, lay it out. We gonna see how ugly this hijack really is. And I'm saying hijack that you think looks just like you and hijack that you think don't look like you. You know what I'm saying? All one and the same based on frequency. Once they veil get warped, man, what, you seen Cinderella, man? 
<laughs> Sin, right? Cinderella, man. These are the sinners, man. Hey, man, let's get it, man. I'm on page 25. Of the various claimants, the representative of the Adalatado Hernando de Soto offered perhaps the best argument. The territory granted to De Soto extended on the west to Rio de los Palmas, and this grant was the same as that previously made to Narvaez. The discovery had grown out of the expedition of Narvaez, to whose rights De Soto had succeeded through the reports which Cabeza, Cabeza de Vaca carried to New Spain. The newly discovered region was evidently England, and this fact disposed of the two prominent rivals, Cortez and Alvarado. The Adelantado had expanded large sums in preparing for this undertaking, a claim advanced with eager vigor by all the parties and usually supported by specific accounts, which unfortunately are not printed. And it was only right that he should be given every opportunity to reap the full advantage from these outlays. Most important of all was that De Soto was already in the country north of the Gulf in command of a large and well-equipped force and presumably on his way toward the region about which they were disputing. So De Soto's already on the way up to this region, right? They're looking for the seven cities of gold in America, man. While saying you're from Africa, man, so they can't belong to you, you give them away to someone else, right? Another image, a falsified image of a true Amaru Khan. It is what it is. You in Nagaville. These Nagas got a land of their very own. Believe it or not, man. Believe it or not, man. Land of milk and honey. So they on the way. They, they disputing as to who can terrify you, torture you, and, you know, tear your land to pieces. Completely ransacked. I mean, just read the Papal Bull, Doom Die Verses 1452. Just read it, man. Read it. Man. Vanquish. They're taking your goods and movable goods. Movable goods, they're taking everything. Read the Papal Bull 1452, man. Because it's all happening. Right, that's in uh, 1452. Love to Lex Will for that. You know, that's in 1452. Um, you know, then they got this popping off in the early 1500s. And this is, who, who are they, uh, you know what I'm saying, meeting with? Charles V, right? They, they meet with Charles, you know what I'm saying, getting orders from black-ass King Charles, man. So this is who's leading siege on these other so-called black people. You got a black man. I mean, I know. I keep repeating this. I got to repeat myself. So my Nagas understand, understand. History repeats itself. That's why you can't just be like, oh, kumbaya. Everybody, let's join together. <laughs> infiltration, er, er, infiltration. I mean, either way, you're susceptible. But damn. No, no. Because you got to no, know, no. It's been infiltration. That's the deeper part of this thing, man. And, you know, I'm not pointing a finger blaming one particular thing. It, it, it's a whole situation, man. It's a whole confederacy, as we know. It's a whole confederacy. But who's the original confederates? <laughs> Everything they're doing is mimicking us, mimicking you, the original cons. All their false gods are mimicking you and your true Hawa. If you're not connected with true Hawa, you're not a true con. Yeah, you could be a black man. Yeah, you could be whatever title you want, but you're not a true con if you're not in code. <laughs> you can't be con on your own, fool. You can't see Genghis thought you could just take the con, you know. Now I'm I'm the victor of this battle, you know, but that didn't make him the victor with the creator, you know what I mean? Let I me mean, pay attention. You know, right now. What Anaga's up against this particular system, man, it, it's it's the 
It's just a reincarnation of the same damn thing. The same damn invasion. The Vatican or the Vatican or the Batukan. The Khan father, right? The house of the Khan, the Batukan, became the Vatican. But who was pushing the Batukan? <laughs> well, originally, the true house of the Khan is the Preston. Then, of course, you later, you got the Batu Khan, literally in the seat of Genghis Khan. That still is the Khan, and that becomes the Vatican, Vatican, original popes and all this stuff, man. Right? That's back to the Papu Bulldog, man. Dog headedness. Silence of Fala. I'm just surfing away, man. Coronado, let go. Drop this popping off, man. Don't mind me. I feel like you feel. I feel like y'all feel. Hey, high five eyes. Ma, man. Always giving us. All right, man. I appreciate you going over time for a night. Doing everything, man. You know, we ain't on no time over here, man. Ain't no time. Only the way. We got time slots just to kind of keep us organized. But all my noggins already know that. Yeah, you know, most likely <laughs> you know, the show might not come on at that particular particular time slot you know it might be a few minutes or you know it might be an hour you know who knows man but we coming though we coming we got Naga sending these shows in we got a 432 these shows put them in 432 hertz we, we got to do that before we load them up and do all that man you know it's a lot going on behind the scenes you know what i mean so i appreciate my patient cons <laughs> that know that we surfed the wave and my you put it in man you you went ahead and lit up all them slaps man you you shot them off like the you know what I'm saying? Like, if I had a bunch of fireworks and it wasn't 4th of July, I'd be popping off right now <laughs> for five eyes, man. You're always popping off and thinking out loud. Make sure y'all in that classroom. The bro always gives us what we need, the vibration to get through, you know, just those real moments, man. And the real moments we got, man. You know, every single Monday, 9 o'clock Pacific, following Yohanna Tan, who let us know, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to take these steps, man. And that's when we put it all together. You know, the unity has to be in code. It has to be a respected code. If you don't respect my creator, ain't no way we can unify. We're going to end up, you know, getting each other's neck bone. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it's not, you know, my creator. You're talking about the power, the most high. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we're riding for. Not just a guy, the most high power. You know what I'm saying? The power of Abraham. The, prop, the power of Isaac, the power of Yaqua, you know what I mean? The power of Joshua, the real Yahshua, the real Hawashu, you know what I mean? Moshe, Dawi, Sheba, you know what I'm saying? Khalifa, the power, you know what I mean? Miriam and, you know, Lady Hannah and, you know, the real ones, man. Lady Dragons on the wall. Let's go. Gotta shout out the, the Aquas. Gotta shout out the sisters. Because the sisters, man, been riding, you know what I mean? Been sliding for a lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> Front line, always, man. The sisters are always right there with us, man. So we got to get it. Aquas A high right here at 432 to try nation. Let's go. All right, we popping off. We popping off. So it's a lot going on right now. <laughs> And just to bring it back to this Charles V situation, man, uh, let's get back a page on 24. It says, early in 1540, we know only that he was on his way when he wrote to Oviedo from Habana on February the 5th. The conqueror of Montezuma Empire left Mexico for the first time and went to see what he could gain by a personal application at the court of his majesty, the emperor. Charles V, early 1540. That's the Benico popping off when? 1539. Oh, he's supposed to be a, a Moor slave. Come on, man. <laughs> they running this joint. What do you mean? Charles V, he's popping off. Stop it with the lies. You sent Esteban. He ain't no slave. He's a Moor. He's as a Moor. He's, Mus he's Mustafa for crying out loud. You telling me he's just a, a Portuguese slave? 
Who's the Portuguese? Who's the Spanish man? Man, it's over, man. The veil is the veil is lifted, man. We stripping all titles. We stripping all false gods and all false titles. We taking all this shit back. We putting it down the dumpster, man. We popping off with Joseph the real, Tokev the not, man. Slicing, dicing. Letting you know that, man. Adam only supposed to eat them greens, man. Adam was supposed to eat them greens. Then after Noah, they started eating the carcasses, the meat, you know. We got to get up off them carcasses and get back to the greens, man. That's what we was made for. Man, Yosef popping off, man. Slicing and dicing. Man, Caesar the Messiah so we can see all them typologies. a hop, bro. a hop to you. Let's go. Ethan squad eye. Yeah, man. So after they conquered Montezuma, the Aztec, they reported to Charles V for validation, you know, for a pat on the back. Job well done. You took out a bunch of Nagas. You took our brothers out. Thank you. You, you took out our cousins over there. Thank you. We don't know what hit us, man. Our own family hit us. That's what hit us. Man, I'm, I'm speaking passionately, man. I feel this shit, don't you? If you don't feel this, man, you need to get about this classroom, man. I'm about to sniff you out, man. No hijacks allowed up in here, man, for real. I think I sniffed me a hijack, man. A little dog-headedness around here, man. Don't let me catch you with your dog head out, man. That's on everything. <laughs> Cause every naga got a dragon. Hey, I put that on Ama. Every naga got a dragon. Let's go. Yeah, they reported to old Charles Quinto. So now the Soto's over here fighting for the right to ravish your your homes, ravish your communities, coming to your spot. You know what I mean? They're fighting for that. The Soto already was there. It's just because the Soto was there, urged. His representative with strong and persistent emphasis, all other exploring expeditions ought to be kept away. It was clearly probable that great and notorious scandals would ensue unless this was guarded against, just as had happened in Peru. If this precaution was not taken, and two exhibitions, expeditions representing conflict of interest should be allowed to come together in the country beside the reach of the royal restraint, many lives would inevitably be lost and great damage be done to the Spaniards and to the souls of the Indians as well, while the enlargement of the royal patrimony would be hindered. Cortez reached Spain sometime in April 1540 and was able to direct his case in person for much of the time. He urged the priority of his complaints under royal license dating from 1529. He told of his many efforts to enlarge the Spanish domain undertaken at great expense, personal sacrifice and danger, and resulting in the loss of relations and friends. From all of this, as he carefully pointed out, neither his majesty nor himself had received any proper benefit, though this was not the result of any fault or lack of diligence on his part, as he hastened to explain, but had been caused by the persistent and ill-concealed hostility of the audiencia and the viceroy in New Spain, quote, concerning all of which his majesty must have been kept heretofore in ignorance, end quote. Nunez de Guzman presented his case in person, though perhaps this was not so much because it was more effective as because his resources must have been limited and his time little occupied. He was able indeed to make out a very good argument, assuming his right to the governorship of New Galatia. So this is all Mexico, New Mexico, all right? So they're they're fighting for the right to govern over your land, your people, your resources. They want to build the damn dams. They want to flood you out. They want to find the cities of gold. <laughs> In India Superior, my noggin. Let's go. So he was indeed able to make a very good argument assuming his right to the governorship of New Galatia, a province which had been greatly enlarged by his conquest. 
these conquests were toward the north and he had taken possession of all the land in that direction in behalf of his Catholic majesty. He would have extended the Spanish territory much further in the same direction if only his zealous efforts had not been abruptly cut short by his precursors or by his persecutors through whose malicious efforts he was even yet nominally under arrest. Nor was this all, for all future expeditions into the new region must go across the territory which was rightfully his, and they could only succeed by the assistance and resources which would be drawn from his country. Thus he was the possessor of the key to all that lay beyond. <laughs> so he's trying to possess everything or not, right? North of Mexico, damn it. <laughs> he said, man, anything that go past here is mine. This is them fighting over your land. <laughs> the commission or license which Pedro de Alvarado took with him from Spain the year before these proceedings opened granted him permission to explore towards the west and the north. The later provision probably inserted as a result of the reports which Cabeza de Vaca brought to Spain. Alvarado had prepared an expedition at great expense, and since the new region lay within his grant, his advocate pleaded it would evidently pertain to him to conquer it. Moreover, he was in very high favor at the court, and is shown by the ease with which he regained his position in spite of the attack by the Mexican audiencia, and also by the ease with which he obtained the papal permission, allowing him to marry the sister of his former wife. But Alvarado figures only slightly in the litigation, and he may have appeared as a party in order to maintain an opposition, rather than with any hope of intention of establishing the justice of his claims. Everything seems to add to the probability of the theory that Mendoza effected an alliance with him very early. It is possible that the negotiations may have begun before Alvarado left Spain, although there is no certainty about anything which preceded the written articles of agreement. Some of the contemporary historians appear to have been ignorant even of the the Council for the Indies referred the whole matter of the petitions and accompanying evidence to the fiscal, the licentiate Villalobos, uh, April 21st, 1540. He made a report which virtually decided the case May 25th. The parties were given an opportunity of replying to this, and they continued to present evidence and petitions and counter charges for a year longer. The final decision, if any was made, has been has not been printed, so far as I know, but the council could hardly have done anything beyond formally endorsing the report of Villalobos. The duty of the fiscal was plain, and his report advises His Majesty not to grant any of the things asked for by the petitioners. He states that this discovery ought to be made by and in behalf of His Majesty, since the region was not included in any previous grant, although the Crown had forbidding any further unlicensed explorations, right? They were explorers back then, not anymore. They found everything, right? <laughs> They're astronauts now. Keyword, explorers beyond the pole, land beyond the plane, right? Hey, world's beyond the pole. But back then, any further expeditions were forbidden. The crown had forbidden any further unlicensed explorations. This would not, this would not prevent expeditions beyond or being undertaken on the part of the crown, which is always at liberty to explore at will. In effect, of course, the report sanctioned the exploration by Mendoza, who represented the royal interest and power. An objection was at once entered in behalf of De Soto, using the very good argument that Mendoza's expedition would send out either would be sent out either at the expense of the crown or of his private fortune. If the former, it was claimed that as the explorer would have the glory in any event, the crown ought to save the expense by allowing De Soto, who had already undertaken the same thing at his own cost, to make these discoveries, which he promised should redound to as a great an extent to the glory and advantage of the emperor. What emperor, my naga? Emperor Charles Kento, black ass King Charles. <laughs> He's everywhere. 
Oh, Charlie boy everywhere collecting, you know, ducats. You know, he, he he's lying all the ducks up. Charlie boy going duck hunting, man. He got his hands out. He he got all the gold. He's dripping, right? Because all this exploring, all these expeditions, licensed expeditions, unlicensed expeditions, whatever they find, they got to break off black ass King Charles. Oh, yeah. Charlesy boy got his hands in everything. He's getting the ducats. <laughs> oh, man. It's a more and more war, man. You can't be unified with everybody. These days, Charles just look like old, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. <laughs> Old uh, peanut, you know, you know, you know, peanut, man, you know. Uh, Charles look like peanut, you know. You know what's up, peanut? Oh, man, I'm over here chilling, you know what I'm saying? You know, taking it real easy, you know what I mean? That's peanut right there, man, Charles. But back then, peanut, Charles, wasn't on no play play. He wanted everything. Charles sent the mercenaries on you, man. He made them all work. Everybody worked for Big Charles, man. Look at him, man. Big Charles, right? Everybody worked for Charles V, man. Who he worked for? It's a more and more war. I know it hurts when you figure this shit out. The people that pop this off on your forehead is Uncle Fred, <laughs> is the family, is the cousins, is the brothers. But it puts everybody in their place. And it unveils, you know, all the illusion, the illusion of power, the illusion of a president. Where's your king? Who's the emperor? Where's the prester? These are real, you know, now conversational pieces. These are conversational times. When we talk to Khan, can't nobody deny the Khan. Khan, ask around. The Khan gets all the love, all the respect. But then now when we start talking talking Khan, you can start talking Khan, you know. Now you can start talking Turkey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, we talk Turk very well around here. You know what's Turkic? Car. You know what car is Turkic for? Melanated. They say black. They meant melanated. Who's the car of Kata, the melanated Nagas of Cathay? Cathay is the pure land. Who's the melanated Nagas of the pure land? Who's the melanated Nagas of the promised land? That's the Kara, Katai, Cathay, Katai, Kara, black in Turkey. Who's the emperor of the Kara, Katai? Uh, now you're coming home back to the press. Yeah, we talk Turkey very well. We talk Turkey very well in Drop Nation. Let's get this for the dissonance before I go crazy, man. Hey, how could it eat the squad, man? Y'all got me popping off. Five eyes, my Yohana time. Yo, Seth. Hey, tune in, man. Keep tuning in. Tomorrow, man, you already know. We got Tim Blar. We got Judah the Great Jedi popping off. Man, we got Copper 144 with a Duak while ago. Wednesday, you already know we got Big Tech to Kum Say. You already know we got Natural by Law. Aqua Tide Bat Zion. Let go, man. Y'all better pop off with the eat the squad, man. Don't get left, man. Don't get left on, man. For the dismount. So they're fighting over who's going to govern, govern. The states that the discovery ought to be made by and in behalf of His Majesty since the region was not included on any previous grant Although the previous expeditions being undertaken on the part of the crown, which is always at liberty to explore at will, in effect, of course, the report sanctioned the exploration by Mendoza, who represented the royal interest and power. So as Mendoza represented the royal interest and power. When we get back to the Cities of Gold cartoon, you know what I mean, as the Benico, when we get back in that, man, just know that that Mendoza represented their royal interest and power. And Esteban is their savior, man. That's the child of the son. Let's go. <laughs> That's Stephen the Christ, man. You better look it up. Esteban, man. An objection was at once entered in behalf of DeSoto using the very good argument that Mendoza's expedition 
would be sent out either at the expense of the crown or of his private fortune. If the former, it was claimed that as the explorer would have the glory in any event, the crown ought to save the expense by allowing De Soto, who had already undertaken the same thing at his own cost, to make these discoveries, which he promised should redound to as great an extent to the glory and advantage of the emperor. If Mendoza was undertaking this at his own expense, it was evident that he would desire to recover his outlay. Here he was merely on the same footing as De Soto, who was prepared to make a better offer to his royal master than Mendoza could possibly afford. So that's why in a cartoon you see them them beefing, De Soto beefing with Mendoza. You know what I'm saying? They're fighting over your shit, right? They're fighting over your things, right? Your stuff, right? <laughs> in either case, there was a danger of scandal and disaster in case the two expeditions should be allowed to come together beyond the range of the royal oversight. No answer to this appeal is recorded and the parties continue to argue down their opponent's case. Oh, but if they come together, they're going to scrap. So we don't want to risk that. Either way, they're going to absolutely massacre the people. Let's put that to the side. Either party is going to massacre the people, right? But we don't want them fighting each other, you know? So let's just give it to the soul. Damn. <laughs> no answer to this appeal is recorded, and the parties continue to argue down their opponents while the Viceroy in New Spain started the expedition, which, under the command of Francisco Vasquez Coronado, discovered the Pueblo Indians of New Mexico, the Grand Canyon of the Colorado. So Coronado is credited for discovering the Pueblo Indians or the first Nagas, you know what I'm saying, and the Grand Canyon of the Colorado and the bison of the Great Plains. Hijack City. The expedition to New Mexico and the Great Plains. Get a piece of this for this map or not. Wow. Two classes of colonists are essential to the security and permanent prosperity of every newly opened country. In New Spain in the 16th century, these two classes, sharply divided and almost antagonistic, the established settlers and the free soldiers of fortune were both of considerable importance. Cortes, so soon as he had conquered the country, recognized the need of providing for its settlement by a stable population. In the petitions and memorials which he wrote in 1539 and 1540, he continually reiterates the declaration of the pains and losses sustained on account of his efforts to bring colonists from Spain to populate the New World. Whether he accomplished all that these memorials claim is doubtful, for there are comparatively few references to this class of immigrants. In the year when Cortes was in position to accomplish his designs, Mendoza declared that the increase of the European population in New Spain came largely after his own arrival there in 1535, and this was probably true. The good Viceroy unquestionably did more than anyone else to place the province on a permanent basis. So Mendoza, oh Mendoza, and wait till we get back to this city's a gold cartoon, man. Mendoza declared that the increase of the European population in Mexico came largely after his own arrival there. And remember what the European looks like. <laughs> in 1535, this was probably true because Mendoza unquestionably did more than anyone else to place the province on a permanent basis. So he, he did more than any other hijack to permanently hijack you. Mendoza did more than any other hijack to permanently hijack you. Now go to the Papal Bull 1452. Let's get back there, right? But they said they're going to put you in perpetual slavery, right? And they just said they gave you a permanent basis of hijack from Mendoza because he did more than any other hijack did to hijack you permanently. But the Papal Bull just gave him the permission to do that in 1452. Pope Nicholas V, right? And now who's benefiting from this Black ass King Charles, man. 
So not everybody that looked like you was getting jammed up by the papal bull. Other people that looked like you were behind it, man. Yo, yo brothers put, your people put that together on your own people, man. You want to talk about unity, man? <laughs> you want to talk about unifying? Man, I couldn't say nothing if we did it to them, man. We couldn't say nothing if we did it to y'all, man. But you can't tell the victims of the bullshit how to react to the bullshit. You can't try to stir our emotions, man. Just back up. Give us about 432 feet, man. Because we popping off right now. Just let us contain all this, you know what I'm saying? Let us construct <laughs> the conversation. Let the cons connect, you know, a little bit. Let us be superconductors, you know what I mean? Because we popping off con. We're the immoral con. 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 Yeah, man. They hijacked us on a permanent basis. When you watch this cartoon, it's, that's the key hijack. And who's running with him? Estebanico, right? Esteban, you know, Azamore, Mustafa Azamore. Black ass Steven. So you got two ops just right there. Black ass Steven and black ass King Charles. <laughs> and put everybody else in, you know, wherever they fit, wherever they fall. Those are two main hijacks in this investigation. We're talking about Coronado expeditions, man. And really everything. Because. They came right in the heart bone of thing. Esteban didn't make it out. So they say, who knows, who knows, who knows, man. Who knows the real story? Mendoza supervised with great care the assignment of land to the newcomers and provided tools and stock for those who had not the means of men, besides directing an increase of royal favor and additional grants proportionate, proportionate to the increase of children. The viceroy frequently advanced the money, which enabled let me see, the money which enabled men who were desirous of settling down to get married. When he came from Spain in 1535, he brought with him a number of eligible spinsters, and it is quite probable that after these had found husbands, he maintained the supply of maids suitable to become the wives of those colonists who wish to experience the royal bounty and favor. So they just all hijacked, you know what I mean? Alvarado engaged in a similar undertaking when he came to Guatemala in 1539. All hijacked, with less success than we may safely hope rewarded the thoughtfulness of Mendoza. A royal order in 1538 had decreed that all who had held encomiendas should marry within three years. If not already possessed of a wife or else forfeit their estates to married men. <laughs> Some of the bachelor landholders protested against the enforcement of this order in Guatemala because eligible white women could not be found nearer than Mexico. To remove this objection, Alvarado brought 20 maidens from Spain. <laughs> so they just kidnapping chicks from Spain, dropping them off, say, all right, cool, we got people to marry. You know, like That's how hijacked they are. They try to steal your things. They're, they're hijacking women, forcing them to marry, to abide by these little hijack laws they got within this competition of the land that they're in while they massacre our women and men with poison, with necromancy. A royal order in 1539 had decreed all who held encomiendas should marry within three years. Uh, to remove this objection, Alvarado brought 20 maids from Spain. Soon after their arrival, a reception was held. <laughs> so they just married. They married on the spot, at which they were given a chance to see their prospective husbands during the evening. <laughs> One of the girls. I mean, <laughs> damn, bro. Like, when is this acceptable, man? You want to talk about Chinese culture or something else, you know, it's being real strict with marriage, but y'all just brought prostitutes from Spain and forced them to marry in moments of coming here from Spain. And then they met their husbands during the evening. One of the girls declared to her companions that she never could marry one of these old fellows. 
who were cut up as if they had just escaped from the infernal regions. <laughs> For some of them are lame, some have only one hand, others have no ears or only one eye, and some of them have lost their faces. The best of them have one or two scars across their forehead. The story is that one of the old fellows overheard this outburst, reported it to his friends, and promptly went off and married the daughter of a powerful con uh, cacique, which is one of the powerful chiefs. Beyond assisting his colonists to get wise, Mendoza did a great deal to foster the agricultural interests of the province. He continued the importation of cattle, which Cortes had begun, and also procured horses and sheep from Spain. He writes in one of his letters of the special especial satisfaction that he felt because of the rapid increase of the Merino sheep in spite of the depredations of the natives and of wild animals. The chief concern of the officials of the Audiencia had been the gold mines. Yeah, they're looking for the cities of go oh, 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 oh. looking for the cities of gold, which yielded a considerable revenue in certain districts, but Mendoza without neglecting these proved how large and reliable was the additional revenue which could be derived from other sources. The Viceroy's success in developing the province could not be shown more clearly than by repeating the description of New Spain in 1555. Written by Robert Thompson, an English merchant engaged in the Spanish trade. In the course of a business tour, Thompson visited the city of Mexico his commercial friends in the city entertained him most hospitably and did their best to make his visit pleasant. He refused, however, to heed their warnings, and his indiscreet freedom of speech finally compelled the officials of the Inquisition, Inquisition to imprison him, thus adding considerably to the length of his residence in the city. After he returned home, he wrote a narrative of his tour in which he says of New Spain, as for victuals in the said city of beef, mutton, hens, capons, quails, guinea cocks, and such like, are all very good cheap, to say the whole quarter of an ox as much as a slave can carry away from the butchers for five times, that is five royal of plate, which is just two shillings and six pence. And a fat sheep at the butchers for three royals, which is eighteen pence and no more. Bread is as good cheap as in Spain, and all other kinds of fruits, apples, pears, pomegranate, quinces, and reasonable at a reasonable rate. The country does yield great store of a very good silk and cochinilla or cochinilla, cochinilla, c o c h i n i l l a. Also, there are many goodly fruits, whereof we have none such as plantains, uh, this is Guyane or Guy, I think it's guavas, sapotes, tunas, and in the wilderness, great store of black cherries and other wholesome fruits. Also, the indigo that doeth come from thence to die blue is a certain hereby. So all that biblical indigo, think about all that, you know what I'm saying, all those dyes supposed to be of, you know, the snails have to be in the Mediterranean for this purple dye. Man, all this stuff is right here, my love. Let's go. So they got balm, salsa, pirella, canna, fistula, sugar, oxides, and many other good and serviceable things that the country does yield, which are yearly brought into Spain, and they're sold and distributed to the many nations. And we'll pick it up right here in the middle of this, uh, you know, narrative right here, you know, by Robert Thompson. Let's pick it up. It says the visceral success in developing the province cannot be shown more clearly than by repeating the description of New Spain in 1555 by Robert Thompson, an English merchant engaged in the Spanish trade. In the course of the business tour, Thompson visited the city of Mexico. His commercial friends in the city entertained him most hospitably and did make best to make his visit pleasant. So yeah, this is 
Robert Tuss. Well, we'll pick it up right here. My line, we got you. Man, we just surfing the wave, man. Black Steep <laughs> and the Coronado Expeditions, man. Reading out the journey of Coronado, 1540 to 1542. Man, just kicking back with my tribe, tribe. A hop to the Ether Squad. All the dragons on the wall, keeping the water flowing at 432 to drop radio. Become a dragon on the wall, copper dragon, silver dragon, go and support the whole team of the Ether Squad as we. As we prep these shows, prepare this flow, you know what I mean? Just get it flowing, man. Just keep the water flowing. We appreciate you. And all my noggers, you know what I'm saying? Just spreading the word and spreading the frequency, making sure the vibration is being felt all across the plane. Hey, ha, you know what I'm saying? For the energy that you are investing and spreading, you know what I'm saying? Spreading the a hop. <laughs> you're spreading the energy, you're spreading the frequency, you're spreading the a hop. So. Keep on trucking, man. Keep them feet moving no matter what's in front of you. You know what I mean? Be creative, man. Use cold, hard, serious thinking right now, man. You know what I'm saying? Use constructive thinking. Be constructive. Con. And keep surfing the wave, man. All praise the wild. Loud. Yeah, man.